What's going on YouTube? Tom here. I'm coming back at you with yet another project car idea. Now this one came to me in kind of an unlikely source of inspiration. I was, at, I was asleep, I'm dreaming, and this is my subconscious telling me something. I found myself in this dream in a Mustang. But not a new Mustang, an S550 like I'm looking to buy. I was actually in a Fox Body Mustang. It's, it has the, all the sounds a Fox Body makes. Everybody's familiar with the Fox Body. What does the Fox say? Rev it up! <laughs> now, they're, they're very famous because they're not necessarily the best looking Mustang, but they made them for years upon years, like over what, 14 years, I think, is what they ended up making in 1979 to 1993, if I've got my years correct. It's post Mustang 2, but pre SN95, but very famous because right now they're dirt cheap. You can pick one up for basically next to nothing, and you can just throw anything at them. They, almost any engine fits. So once I woke up, I'm like, I kind of want a Fox body now. My dreams are telling me something. Maybe I want one secretly and didn't realize it. So I go on Craigslist and I look. This is kind of like I do with every project idea that pops into my head. I just do immediate Google search of, you know, whatever, whatever for sale. And I take a look. And I just say, hey, well, what can I get one for? So the first one that caught my eye was actually a V8 one. It'd been motor swapped, because honestly, every V8 one I found, I learned quickly, every V8 Mustang you find on Craigslist has had some form of motor swap done to it. This was the cheapest I could find for V8. It was a 302 Windsor from a 2000 Ford Explorer, which was actually the last year they made the Windsor before they switched over to the modular and the Explorer. You know, 200 and whatever horsepower, low 200. There wasn't a lot of power to it, but this one, of course, had had a little bit of work done to it. Made it a little better, not totally stock. Not a terrible engine either, but I'm like 4,500's kind of a lot. I always thought these cars were dirt cheap. So, you know, I immediately look again and figure, well, I'm going to start looking at some cheaper ones. Let's see about other ones. And I found some other more expensive ones, like I found a couple of other V8s that have been swapped for about, you know, eight or 9,000, which I thought that's pretty typical for a good shape car. And I thought, no, it's a project. It's not meant to be in good shape. I'm not buying someone else's completed project. I want to buy my own project. Of course, buying a completed project means you save money, but then... Where's the fun in that? Now I'm thought, I'm gonna lose my own money here. I want my own money pit. Problem headache child here. That's why car guys do projects. I found one with a Ford, I forgot what it was, 350 stroker or something. I gotta oh, put it down there once I've looked that one up. It was, I'd never heard of it. It was kind of like, wow, that's an interesting Ford engine. It was not a Chevy though. It was a Ford engine, but it was not the typical Ford engine. So then I said, all right, I'm looking at 90s ones. Let's look at some older ones. And I actually found, and I thought this is not, not project worthy, but I found a 1986 SVO. For those not familiar with the SVO, that was the 2.3 liter inline four with a turbo in the 80s. Essentially, it was the EcoBoost Mustang of its day. Ford is not new on the EcoBoost. That was basically back, that was the first attempt at the EcoBoost. I actually thought that was pretty cool. It was $12,000. I thought, nah, that's cool, but that's not project worthy. That's a collector car. So finally I said, all right, I'm looking at V8s. Let's face it, all these, all these V8s are not the original motor in the car. So let's look a little bit, you know, lower price. Possibly if the motor's just going to get swapped out, let's, let's, let's look at other engines. Obviously the four-cylinder, because that was real common for the Mustang back then. So I found couple different four cylinders. One of them was 1500 and one was 2500. Just your typical little Mustang. But I noticed this is the way you want, if you're gonna move a Mustang box body, this is how you have to sell it. Every listing I found said something along the lines of good candidate for race car. In fact, that original V8 one I was looking at with the 302 Windsor, it said rust free and perfect candidate for tubbing for big tires. I thought, yep, that sounds about right. So, and I figured, all right, we'll say you can get a good four-cylinder Mustang from 1990 to 1993, typical era of Mustangs. I figured, well, we'll, look at, we'll, keep, we'll keep it in that era. Because I also 
also did find a 1979 model with no motor in it, which I thought that's perfect because I'm not paying for a motor. I'm paying for just the shell for 800 bucks. But obviously I said, no, that's, how do I get it over? And then it just needed more work than I think I was willing to do. But then I said, all right, let's go with the four cylinder. Let's, let's actually get a four cylinder then. Let's take a look at that. And let's go look at how, how much a motor would cost. Because let's face it, what motor are, you, are am I gonna do? Pretty obvious. It's gonna get coyote swapped because that's what you do. That's become a pretty popular swap nowadays for Fox bodies. So Ford will sell you a brand new crate engine coyote for eight grand. Although that's the Ford price, that's MSRP. Of course you can get them for cheaper. You can go as low as like seven, high sixes even. And of course you could always go to a junkyard and buy a wrecked one, even less. Now of course that was a 17 spec Gen 2 Coyote that Ford will sell you. And of course you could go to a junkyard and find any gear Coyote and go back as far as 2011 at that point. But we'll, we'll call it seven grand. We'll say seven. Realistically, that's what in negotiation you'd pay. Car would be right around two, possibly as high as three, depending on the shape of the car. And of course, some body work would have to go into it. Maybe you know, two, three thousand dollars worth of upgrades. Because of course, I would want to make it look like a GT, but a four-cylinder. And then, of course, we got to talk things like, all right, four, how much would a good ECU cost? That's at least a grand. Headers. Now, that was an interesting one. When I was looking at some Cooks headers, Cooks actually makes one set for the Mustang Fox body specifically with a coyote motor. Now, cooks, I found out, don't come ceramic coated, so by the time you get either heat wrap or ceramic coated, we'll call the, we'll just say that the headers will cost you give or take two grand. I mean, right around there, because by the time you're done ceramic coating, but then you could always run like a header back or a cat back exhaust setup. It's an old enough car where most, I think most states, you wouldn't even have to get it emissions tested since it's over 25 years old. I live in Florida where we don't get emissions testing even on new cars, so that wouldn't be a huge deal. So, it could always just go with something like that. And of course, my thoughts are I always loved it when those Mustangs, the SN95s and the Fox 5s have like the two big chrome tips coming out of the bumper. I always thought that looked good. It might be my inner redneck liking that or something, but I just thought that always looked cool. And then I guess if money just were absolutely no object, I found out they also make a Pro Charger setup specifically for the Fox body with a Coyote swap again because the hood clearance is a little bit lower. That would be a pretty nice street car right there. Or even just go ahead and go with the full cage and make it a full-blown race car too. That would be another option. Now, realistically, everything I just named, let's we'll call that 25 grand. That, that'd be a lot of money. My dad pointed out, I was telling him about this a while ago, I guess this is an idea I had, and he says, it sounds like you're spending a lot of money to make an old car new, and I was like, yeah, but let's go to a Ford dealer and look at a brand new Mustang GT, because if I got the, the new Coyote with a Mustang attached to it at a dealer, it would be around 40 grand, so 25, 40, and to be honest, it would be faster as a Fox body, so. I thought that'd be a cool little project if I ever had just money burning a hole in my pocket because I know everyone's going to say to me, oh no, I just spend your money on something else. That's a stupid waste of money. I know, I know. I can dream, can't I? The other, the other idea I had was the Chevy Silverado project. I'll, I'll link the video up above of me talking about that. That was one that, same thing, it's, it's not going to happen anytime soon, but because I'm broke right now, but... If it did, I would for sure put it on YouTube. Either Silverado or Mustang. If I ever do pull out a project car, I would put it on YouTube. Because I can think of some other famous project Mustangs out there. Not Farah. That very famous Fox body. That was, I guess that might even be the car I saw in my subconscious. was his amazing looking Fox body. It's just, oh wide body actually looks amazing in that. It's like a cop Mustang. 
I was reading some article he spent forty thousand dollars on that, so that that's actually pretty good typical budget for a car that nice. But anyway, let me know in the comments below what you all think about that. Do y'all y'all like the idea of a Fox Body project or? What? Because I, I think that'd be pretty cool to have a Coyote Swap Fox body along with a brand new Coyote. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what you all think. If you like this video? Go ahead and leave a thumbs up. If you're stopping in for the first time? Go ahead and subscribe. Help this channel grow. Anyway, take care. Have a good day.